This video is a continuation on the liver. So the first video was about how the liver handles carbohydrates and now we'll talk about some of the other liver functions. So join with me in drawing the liver. Yep, it pretty much looks like a boomerang in that picture, doesn't it? Okay, so one important thing that the liver does is um, blood that enters it. So we'll put on here with the pink, again, a hepatic artery. And then in blue, a hepatic vein. So ammonia that enters the liver is converted into urea. Ammonia is a byproduct of amino acid metabolism and it is very toxic to our bodies and urea is toxic but less so. So in other words we can tolerate a higher concentration of urea in our blood than we can ammonia. So that's one of the jobs of the liver. Now what can happen is that if um, the liver, or I'm going to put hepatocytes actually, if the hepatocytes aren't working right, then ammonia can actually build up in the blood and it can affect brain function and this can cause um, personality changes and confusion. Uh, most, it's almost noticeable like they kind of act like they're drunk if they're having end-stage liver failure, they're um, irascible, angry, frustrated. So we might see um, that as a symptom. Okay, so then a second job that I'm going to put on this page of your notes is that the liver makes plasma proteins. And so if um, it makes these plasma proteins and then those are going to leave via the hepatic vein, makes a whole bunch of different ones. And uh, for our purposes here, I'm going to highlight that it makes all of the clotting factors And that includes um, fibrinogen, which is the last step in blood clotting. And so you've got to have um, fibrin, is what it's called, to make a clot. And then also it makes albumin. The liver makes albumin, which just like it sounds, it's basically the same protein that you find in egg whites. And just like an egg white, have you ever noticed how it's um, kind of kind of spongy almost, especially when you look at it raw, and it holds the water, right? When you, If you were to crack an egg, the egg white doesn't just go everywhere. It kind of congeals up. I don't know if I'm saying that in a good way, but anyway, the point is, is that it holds water. Well, albumin does the same thing in your blood vessels. So it holds water in the blood vessels to main maintain blood pressure. So then we'll use our green pen again to talk about yet another problem. So if the hepatocytes aren't working right, then what do you think would be one noticeable problem if someone's having liver problems is that they might have bleeding problems. So if the liver is infected with, say, hepatitis or has a disease such as fatty liver disease or cirrhosis of the liver, bleeding problems might um, be of resulting. And 
then right here you can see what what do you think would happen if the liver couldn't make enough albumin and we would see that they might have low or erratic blood pressure erratic means changing rapidly okay then uh, the liver also um, makes transferrin and that's actually a plasma protein as well and it just like the name sounds transports iron because ferrous means iron the liver also stores iron which would make sense, right? And then it can ship it out with transferrin. And it also makes another uh, chemical called hepacidin. Now, this, um, this chemical actually inhibits iron absorption in your gut. So if your liver is filled up with iron and you have plenty of iron stores, then you will not absorb as much from your food because um, the liver will make more of this and essentially um, stop absorbing it, which is good, right? Um, you don't want to have too much iron. It causes joint pain and um, liver problems, spleen problems, etc. So we can stop absorbing iron but really the only way to lose iron is by bleeding. There are maybe a couple other ways, but the really, for all intents and purposes, the main way to lose iron is by bleeding. And that is why women are more likely to have iron deficiency anemia because they bleed more. They bleed every month during their reproductive years, unless they're pregnant. And um, also statistically, women um, are less likely to eat foods that have a lot of iron, or if they are, like something like kale. There are a lot of vegetables that might have iron, but they also have chemicals in them that block the absorption of iron. So even if the food looks like it has enough iron, we don't absorb it as well. Anyway, so for, for um, uh, just a, a ballpark kind of idea, women are more likely to have iron deficiency anemia than men are. Okay, and then one other function I want to talk about also refers to the blood. So um, the liver can break, break down old red blood cells. Let's just put this in black down here. So bilirubin is a breakdown product of old red blood cells, specifically of the heme, the iron component of it. But as heme gets broken down, it starts out red, and then as the pigment is broken down, it actually turns yellow. So bilirubin is yellow. Actually, we can highlight this, right? And that yellow breakdown product from old red, red blood cells has to be conjugated, which means um, just big picture idea. What that really means is it's made soluble. So it could be gotten rid of from the body as a pigment called urochrome. That's what makes our pee yellow. And once, it's con once bilirubin is conjugated, it can be transported to the kidneys and excreted in your urine. Or, so that would be, that would be one option, or 
it can be excreted in bile. And then, it's excreted as what's called stercobilin. I don't have a brown, but this is what makes feces brown. So I like to think of uh, this job of the liver by conjugating bilirubin and then um, eventual, its eventual ex excretion from our body is what gives our waste products their color. It makes our pee yellow and our poop brown. Now, if there are any problems um, with, with this, um, these functions of the liver, then we'll use green again. And um, what we see is jaundice because bilirubin is yellow. So if it is building up and not being conjugated, then um, the, it will, there will be so much of it in the blood that it actually makes the skin and the turn a little bit yellow and the whites of the eyes, it's really noticeable. So someone could have jaundice uh, if they have liver disease like hepatitis or cirrhosis of the liver or they could have it because they're a little bitty baby and their hepatocytes are not yet mature enough to do a quick enough job of conjugating all the bilirubin that's being produced in their newborn state now that their, um, uh, mo their mother is not doing most of that for them anymore once they're born. So um, it can happen in either disease states or just a natural part of um, maturity for a newborn baby. And then UV lights, I'll use black for this. Everybody always asks, well, why do they put the babies under UV lights when they have jaundice? And that's because the UV light literally breaks up the um, bilirubin so it can be excreted from the body. So it mechanically is doing what the liver can chemically do. So it breaks up uh, bilirubin so that it can be excreted. All right, and so then we have one more video on the liver coming up, and that one uh, we'll be covering uh, the liver and lipoproteins and the liver, uh, its immune functions and its vitamin storage.